lives are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. I think I think I can do better. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, better. That's good. Way that, better. That was really, really good. Really, really good. Hi, Jenny. Hi, pumps with proper shoes yet again. Real shoes. You're not wearing men's flip flops, which they're, is they're women's flip flops. Well, women and men. The one I buy are for women. Well, they're a flip. Don't <laughs> is what I would or call a them. flip flop. Pun intended. Pun intended because they are awful. I mean, absolutely awful. I've had it with them. They're so comfy, though. What have you had it with, pumps? Oh, my God. I've had it with scams. And even more particularly, I've had it with stupid people that fall for scams, of which I am now one as of 5 a.m. this morning. So I wake up, and there's this random number that says I've been locked out of my Amazon Prime account. Pump the brakes. I just want to establish it is a random number. No, it's like letters. Right. Okay. Go it's on. It's like Proceed. letters. I just right. want to paint the picture for yeah. the listener. Yes. Okay. So it's like random letters and I open it and it says, you've been locked out of your Amazon account. And I was like, oh no. And it says, if you don't activate, reactivate it in 24 hours, I don't know, something will happen, whatever. So I immediately, it's like five o'clock in the morning. The text came in at like 3 a.m. So I immediately go in. I do all my information. Right. My bank account information. Of course. My debit card information. Naturally. My fucking social security number. Naturally. Do all of it. Yeah. And then I kind of think, I hope that wasn't like a scam. Right. But then I just don't worry about it. Right. Till I get here. Right. And I say, Kyle's. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's, this is what happened. Do you think I got scammed? <laughs> and she's like, Amazon would not need your social security number. <laughs> I was like, fuck me. God bless America. Kyle's had to break. She had to solve the problem for me. It made my morning, though. <laughs> I mean, did you give me your date of birth? All of it. It's un and all of it. Believable. But it did direct me immediately to my Amazon account. They're hackers. They're scammers. They I know. This is unbelievable. I but, know. But listener, this is the same person that made up a rule out of thin air that when one turns 60, one <laughs> must get bangs. So this is on brand. <laughs> I'm just, I'm shocked. I mean, I'm always so shocked sometimes when I'm around you that you're just making it. <laughs> you know, just, just making it through life. You fall down all the time. Now we're giving out social security numbers, <laughs> date of birth, date of passwords, birth, bank account information. And I believe for the permanent record, we could go back about three or four episodes. And I'm talking about me fighting with somebody at Chase Bank because they asked me for my bank account number at right. Citibank. And they asked for my Chase bank account number. And I'm in Paris and I picked a fight with this person. And I thought I wasn't supposed to give it out. And you're like, yeah, right. You're not supposed to give it out. And here you are texting it right to a... 3 a.m. text? A hacker text, yeah. Red flag number one, you received it at 3 a.m. Right. Number two, it's a bunch of letters. I know all this now because Kylie explained it to me. But at, for the permanent record, I realized that was the biggest dumb shit move in the history of the world. So I have to run up to my bank, redo all that shit. And the girl was trying to make me feel better at the bank. She goes... I woke up to that exact same text mm -hmm. and I said, but I bet you didn't give him all your information, did you? She goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty Ricky move. Okay. You might as well just go and give him your blood type and your STD records just for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God my STD records are 100% clean. That is good to know, listener. <laughs> but Kylie, can you put that in the permanent record? No, no STDs for pumps, <laughs> which is a miracle considering her track record with giving out information. <laughs> okay, let me tell you what I've had it with. Okay, non graduation graduations. It's the worst. It is so stupid. It makes me homicidal. So Richard trots in here today, mm -hmm. and he says. Yeah, I went to my son's graduation, and I'm doing the math on it. I'm like, Richard has little kids. Little and then kids. he announces it was a preschool graduation. 
It's so stupid and unnecessary. I can't even talk about it. Then Kylie reveals that she had a kindergarten graduation wherein she cried during the ceremony. It was so emotional. (laughs) And then Richard reveals that he recently went to a first grade graduation. I remember for my kids, I went to their middle school graduations, adorable ceremonies. I might have even shed a tear. And we all know I cry once annually. So then you get to the high school graduation, which I would say is the real one. But here's my problem. When we went from preschool to kindergarten, we just moved along. Never had a graduation. Kindergarten to lower school, we just moved along. Right. When I switched from lower school to middle school, I just trotted right along. Right. And here we are. And I know we sound like, well, back in my day, I walked uphill in the snow. Since we are 90. Barefoot, blah, blah. But here's the problem. I think we're over celebrating normal things. Like you should graduate from preschool. Like there should not be a party such or a, a low rate of graduation in preschool <laughs> right. that we have to celebrate it. I the, mean, the same with elementary school. I would even say the same for high school. I mean, we re- we have just received, av- as I'm sure you have, a lot of graduation announcements yes. for our friends. Yes, Josh and I have just adopted this. Send us the kids of Venmo. Oh, that's a great just idea. Just send them in. That's, th- let's just they cut give to the a chase. Shit if you go to a party. Let's cut to the chase. Right. Let's get to the nut cut in here. Kid wants money. Right. We're, we'll, we'll do it in a quick, easy, transactional Venmo. You can go to the graduation. You can take your tassel from one side of your hat to the other. But here's one thing I'm never going to send money to. It's a preschool graduation, no. lower school graduation, middle school graduation. I have had it. One hundred percent had it. Had it. What, these kids are going to be monsters when they show up for their first day of work. They're going to expect an office party for them at right. the end of the day. Where's the cake? Where's the my mom photographer? <laughs> Where are all everybody saying how great I did? It's gotten out of control. But the preschool, kindergarten, lower school, middle school, that all just needs to be fucking burnt to the ground. That's right. I mean, just burn that shit to the ground. This isn't getting enough coverage in the press either. No. No. I mean, it's horrible. We got to get everybody. We've got to get rid of these things. I think if we just all stand up in solidarity, no, we're not coming to your gender reveal. No, we're not coming to your stupid fucking kindergarten graduation. If we all just kind of revolt, maybe it'll go down. Social media. No, we would have a huge opponent, a powerful, powerful force called the power mom oh yeah the power mom i think we could take it together we could probably take them down but i mean these women are serious about their helicopter like activities right and they have an enthusiasm about motherhood about the minutia the non-important parts of motherhood right the minutia i'm more into the quality time with my child right whether it's sitting down watching TV, walking the dogs. Me doing activities circling around the school means nothing to my child. It means more to the other moms. Right. I'd be flexing for them. But these bitches, that would be our, our opponent. And I'm, I'm equal to the task, and I reckon you are too. Yeah, no, I can take on a power mom at this age. All right. All right. Well, welcome to I've Had It Podcast, where we just waged war against power mothers of America. <laughs> Which is a large sect. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. She is the Princess Diana of Oklahoma (laughs) and of podcasting and the star of our show. And we are all so lucky to have this bright, shining little angel in our lives. Kylie, what's going on on social media? I've got some good comments for you today. Oh, good. good. I'm going to start with Kaylin. Okay. Okay. She said, my two favorites, Jen, the athletic goddess. Oh, Oh, that's nice. And Pumps, the attorney goddess. Oh, (laughs) I'll take athlete over attorney any day. No shit, I would too. (laughs) She said, can we all take a second to thank God for these ladies? Oh. Jennifer and Pumps for President 2024. That is so nice. nice. We're not worthy of this kindness. No, we really are not. We just declared war. (laughs) Yeah, Next week they won't be near as nice. We'll let you take it back. But seriously, in all sincerity, that is so nice. And and obviously, thank you for recognizing my athleticism. Oh, God. In the permanent record on the World Wide Web. I mean, talk about feeding a stray cat. Love you. Love. I mean, like, (laughs) really, really love you. Okay, Kylie, who's next? Okay. Someone with the name Kay said, Pumps, as a Floridian, I consider you the princess of Florida for sure. 
princess of all 50 states, <laughs> even with your crime against humanity, which is Sweet Tea Gate. <laughs> Sweet Tea Gate. And Jen, of course, is the sexiest person in the world. Oh, I bet she liked that. Great. I mean, fantastic comments. So many things to dissect. Number one, the crime against humanity. I couldn't have said it better myself. Totally agree. Number two, all that stuff about me being sexy is spot on. If you need to have any follow up comments, just let us know. Send them directly, DM them directly to Kylie. I love that I have a Floridian supporter. I know. It's great. Oh, they're kind of coming out of the woodwork, like the don't get your panties in a wad, Florida people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I do have to note that she had a typo that I took the liberty to correct, but she did say, and Jen, of course, is the sexist person in the world. <laughs> I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. That's right. Yeah. Okay, my last one. Okay. A star has five points. Jennifer, Kylie, Pumps, Richard, and Pickleball. Oh, the fifth star going to Pickleball, the fifth point. Today's trio, dare I say trifecta, <laughs> of comments from See. social media. It is banger after banger after humzinger. Kylie, you nailed it. If this podcast ever gets more than 10 listeners, we'll give you a raise. <laughs> if that ever happens. Excellent. Permanent record. For the permanent, permanent record. record. Uh -huh. Yes. I'll tell you what's been the biggest game changer for me this summer. What is it? The Lumi deodorant. Oh my gosh. No, I love their wipes. You can just wipe off after workout and throw your clothes on. You don't have to worry about smelling. No, that's the real deal. No, this summer, it's like so hot, I'm sweating in out of the car, yes. pickleball practice, exercise class. I've been using their cream, like putting it on my feet, on my pits, inner thighs. I smell fresh as a daisy. No, it's the real deal. You got to get some. It is so good. Listener, if you want to smell as fresh as Pumps and Me, new customers can get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code HADIT at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use the code HADIT. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. Pumps, I've been taking this AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I decided to give it a try because I wanted more energy and I really wanted to do something positive for myself every day. So right when I wake up, I take AG1. It is so easy to take. It's the healthiest thing that I've really done for myself and I can do it in under one minute. It gives me all this increased energy. I have so much more energy when I'm playing pickleball. And the best thing about AG1 is it's delivered to me every month. So it's been super easy to integrate this into like a daily habit. So listener, if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash had it. That's athleticgreens.com slash had it. You have got to check this stuff out. All right, listen up, listener. Today is an incredibly exciting day. Very exciting. For I've Had It podcast, and particularly for our darling little state, because we have an in-studio guest, and she is an Oklahoman. Yep. She is the pioneer woman. Yep. She is Ree Drummond, who got in her truck, put on her boots, and drove all the way to the big city <laughs> to sit down with Jen and Pumps. Let's get Ree Drummond in here. Okay, Ree Drummond, how are you? Oh my gosh. Pumps, thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jen. Hi, Ree. Hi, Ree. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The supporting yeah, role. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It is her show. There's well, no doubt. I, I mean, heard. America's voted. And she is not <laughs> just the star up, of the show, not. but like a Princess Diana. I mean, that was hilarious. It, I could not be the furthest thing from a princess. I disagree. I disagree. Thank I, you. But I'm so happy to be here. I'm big fans. Um, proud to claim you as fellow Okies. That's right. You know, them. when I knew you were coming today, I felt this, you know, humans are so tribal. And yes. I felt this immediate, like, reason my tribe. Right. We're Okies. <laughs> like, I will defend her to the death. Well, and I just and felt this camaraderie. We all sound alike. We all do. Like, you yes, sound do. like because I, I, my sister listens to you. My uh, different generations. One of my daughters listens to you now, and it's great because you're you sound like 
us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And there's there's comfort in that. Yes. Okay, so Re, everybody knows that you cook, that you do recipes, that you blog, but there's something in your bio that I want to tap into today. Oh, Lord. Okay. And it's the weirdo part. I feel like there's an edgy side to Re that's dying to break out. <laughs> Well, I guess I, I'm I'm strange. I, I don't know. I, I think something happens when the cameras start rolling on my Food Network show. And it's not necessarily that I behave, but I just I think I just want to get through it because it'll be like, over faster because right. I'm not natural in, on camera or I wasn't when I first started. But um, when I when I meet people uh, in real life, you know, they they <laughs> they comment that I have a more irreverent side than they're used to. I used to burp the alphabet. I, I sort of, <laughs> okay. I, I hurt my esophagus along the way because I were <laughs> showing off your trick. Too many contests, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, just weirdo in the sense that, you know, I'm not right in the head. Well, I mean, you're in welcome company. Right, you're, you're right where you should be. I we know, are batshit crazy, the two of yes, us. And I it's am unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bree, what have you had it with? I, okay. How many do I get? As many, many as you want. Really? You're the pioneer woman. Oh, That's thank right. You. I thank mean, you're you. not quite the Princess Diana. I was going to say, how do you feel about sitting in the room with both <laughs> the pioneer woman and Princess Diana? Like a loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're sitting in but your, like an athlete, your design because, yeah, building. We're sitting so. in your building. That's, that <laughs> makes we're different. sitting in the building you own, Jennifer. <laughs> um, I, okay. I have had it had it and it just happened to me so it's fresh with my children calling me because they need to talk through something or they need something having a conversation with me only for me to find out at the end of the conversation that we've been on speakerphone the whole time that's the worst it is a violation yes it is it's it a is. huge violation we call this type of thing a dick over that's a dick over for it's sure t- your kids totally dicked you over on that Ray. they did they yes. did and they they keep doing it I, they don't understand so here's the the most recent one was one of my beautiful children whom i love uh called me one day and said uh, he was having problems with enrolling in summer classes because of a hold and a thing and a th- and, and I, I wasn't in the mood. I just <laughs> I, I've raised them. They're right. out of the house. They should be able to find out where to get the answers that they need. You know, agree. So I, I wasn't totally having. Agree. I was busy. I was working on my things, and and I I wasn't going to pretend like I was going to be helpful. So I. You know, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, just do it yourself. D- yeah, I mean, well, how do I find that out? Well, you ask questions, and I, you know, so then <laughs> just he, real talk. He kept coming. Yeah, ask questions. <laughs> well, who do I ask? Well, you need to find out. You know, it, I just wasn't, I wasn't right. having it, and and I asked him something back, and there was this voice that goes, "Oh, hi, Mrs. Drummond. This is the guidance counselor." And, Shut and I, up in front of the guidance yes, counselor. Yes, and I'd been I'd been short and just, you know, <laughs> yeah. not I'd just been snippy and cranky and, you know. The but guy- my my girls do it. They, you know, my yeah. my other son did it. He was at his girlfriend's house. Her parents were present. Yeah. He oh, didn't God. tell me until Thank after. God you didn't say anything. Well, I did. I, I mean, I, <laughs> but you didn't say, God, her parents are weird. No, nothing about them. <laughs> That's what I would have said. <laughs> but yeah, some, I, I said something that would make her parents question him as a choice oh, for shit. a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then I was like, well, that's your fault. You should have told right. me you were on speakerphone. For sure. Josh does this kind of stuff. So you have the problem with your children doing this to you. I have the problem with Josh doing this to me. He'll have somebody in the car and he'll call me and he'll start in on something. And then I find out later somebody was on the phone or he does the reverse of this. The other day, and you've been in my office now, it's all open. He comes into the office. He had just left the doctor. He's like, yeah, I went to the doctor. They ran all the blood work. She's saying that my testosterone could be a little low. And I have all these like (laughs) four 30-year-olds that work for me, all millennials, right? And so I don't know if I'm going to do the pellet. And I go, can we talk about this at home later? (laughs) And then I hear all this snickering. But it's just like this... It's just a breathtaking lack of boundaries. Mm -hmm. But to your point, sometimes you just want to kind of 
grind your kids' gears a little bit. Right. Yeah. And it's and it's for you and the child only. Because you know, we have to feign we are wonderful mothers publicly all the time. Right. But when you're having a private phone conversation and you have an opportunity to kind of chew an ass, <laughs> there's something <laughs> satisfying about that as a mom. It like, is. are you kidding me? You can't figure this out. I'm trying to raise you to be autonomous. And here you are calling your mom, and then you find out the guidance counselor yeah, here's this ass chewing. <laughs> that is really an egregious it's violation. In his mind, he's probably like, the pioneer woman, she's the perfect woman. She cooks. She does all this stuff. And you're just like, <laughs> I was like, figure it out. Figure it out, you dipshit. <laughs> now, one time I was, my, I had told my youngest to blow the grass off of the sidewalk or the, what do you call it? In the front yard. Driveway. Driveway and then the little path. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> hundred percent doesn't matter. So he said, I go, he wanted to go somewhere and said, after you do that, you can. He's like, oh, I completely, completely did it. I was like, great. So I go outside. Not only had he not done it, he hadn't even tried to like move it. I don't think he ever touched the blower. So anyway, I I call him out there and I just start chewing his ass out. I think I called him a liar, you know, the (laughs) whole nine. And I see in my peripheral vision, two of my neighbors are going on a walk. And I just thought, of course, I'm losing my shit. I'm a child. I never lose my shit on. And the neighbors are here. So I'm like, great. DHS will be here any minute. No, I mean, it's, it's the worst. Everybody has to have a meltdown on their kid. Well, and you wonder, I'm starting to wonder if they do it as sort of to to insulate, as a, to train me to stop chewing their butts, you know, because I I, I am a tough mom. I mean, I'm I'm just not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to believe them. I'm not, you know, (laughs) I I don't, I don't, I'm not going to take it. So I think they're tired of hearing from me. So they're trying to train me. To, to be on my best behavior anytime they call. Which one could say is a little manipulative. <laughs> not kids. Not teenagers. <laughs> no. No, not, not, not that. kids. Never. Never. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about an email marked as urgent? Oh, my gosh. That is, I have had it. <laughs> now, this is more in the work realm. Right, so, right. And see, I, I feel, the reason I'm so excited to be here is I feel that I am the child born of you two. <laughs> like, I just, I, I relate in so many ways to both of you. And Pumps, I, I don't know if this is true about you, but I do believe that deadlines are are simply suggestions. (laughs) (laughs) And I I suspect that you do not conduct your life in such a manner. That's correct. They're just kind of guidelines. Right. Right. I have a lot of emails that have urgent in the subject line, (laughs) right? (laughs) you know, on any given day. But I have found that it's really not urgent. Right. It's really really urgent about their schedule wh- and when they want something from me. But so my thing is, I don't want to know your deadline for getting this. I want to know the deadline after which the entire world will fall apart if, <laughs> if I don't get it to you. So that's how I operate on any, any given day, the hottest, hottest fire. The, that's the, the one most, that gets out. So you're a procrastinator. You use, well, you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm a terrible procrastinator. So I am the exact opposite. Yes. If somebody puts urgent, I'm like, you don't even have to write urgent because an email comes into my inbox and I, I'm i like, how like, quickly can I return it? Right. A text comes to my phone. How quickly can I put this fire oh, out? Gosh, yeah, she it's is. just an immediate. She's good. Kylie kind of lets her stuff kind of sit a little bit, not work stuff, but like her personal stuff. She'll be like, yeah, such and such texted me and said, and I'll talk to her three days later. I'm like, do you text that friend back? No. I'm like, <laughs> Kylie, you have got to change this behavior. So she's more... <laughs> cut from your cloth. But no, I, if I see an urgent, I'm like, I'm equal to the task and I'll have it back to you so fast. You're not even going to know what to do with yourself. (laughs) You want to demand urgency of me? You've got it. Well, see, I, it has the opposite effect on me because I, I tell myself that it actually is not urgent. Right. So (laughs) I, I am actually going to approach this as if it's the opposite of urgent. (laughs) I put it at the bottom of your to-do list. Right. So it's this, it's a very psychotic cycle, my inbox. The rebellion Um, of it. I like the rebellion. This this is the weird, see, this is the edge. Well, I blame. This is the edge. I blame everything on two things. Okay. One of two things, being a redhead. Yeah. And, or being a middle child. So, oh, yeah. There's um, a lot of data on the middle child thing. You can I, totally lean into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
the email inbox world is is a, is the bane of my existence. Yeah, I hate email. Okay. I hate texts that come to your phone. I mean, I just hate all of the. You have to answer all the time. Well, like it's I had interesting a, because you did answer that text you got this morning where you handed out your social security number, date that of birth, so and bank account number. Because it was at, it was from Amazon. And you returned that at 5 a.m. I did. Is, I mean, I don't know. Pumps. I know that was well, so bad. Lad, my husband got one of those and uh, screenshotted it and, and sent it to me so I could help him with it. So he, he felt, <laughs> at least he didn't fall for it, but he sort of did fall for it. Right. But he, did you immediately say that's a scam? Uh, yeah, obviously. See, you know, I mean, you should, I'm <laughs> up at five. You no, should have texted I it just, to me, I which so, normally you would have. I know. I just was like, oh my God, I've got to get my Amazon account working. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think of. Like, I, I probably order something from Amazon every day. Uh, by the way, pumps. This has. This is another. I, I'm just jumping to a do different it. topic, but I do want to tell you that I also am. I am two years sober from Doctor Pimple Popper. Oh. I made myself nauseated. No, it's I, so I, bad. I had like an autoimmune response because <laughs> I was watching them so often, so much, and I almost kind of needed them. And yeah. so I over overdosed, and uh, it's it made me <laughs> made you sick, made physically me sick, sick for twelve hours. Yeah, so, no. were you binging through the night as well, not getting sleep? Not, I wasn't losing sleep over it, but I I was uh, replacing you know productive activities yeah. with it. Rhea, I hate to tell you this, but I've been on TikTok. So they were talking about what's on my For You page. Blackheads in the ear. Oh. I had I did it for like 45 minutes. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got to get it off. Because I was just like, oh, my gosh. And like one of my kids came in and was talking to me. I was like, just a minute, just a minute. I mean, like. I'm obsessed. I get so Are into you still? It. Are you, I thought No, you, I, I thought stopped you were doing it because I was like, cannot. I'm like, one day it was like six hours oh I went down God. the rabbit hole <laughs> of the zits, the blackheads, all that. So I well, was like, no more. You know what? The, my my journey was it started with this YouTube video, and I'm almost afraid to tell you the title, but it was I will tell you. <laughs> It's called Gary's Cyst. Was it the back that kind of had mashed mm-hmm. potatoes coming yes, out? Yes, yes, yes. That's so the that one that, was, that, was, like, that <laughs> was my gateway drug. That was mine too. It that was, was. That was the exact the, video. I had an ingrown hair in my vaginal area. <laughs> Pups came over, put the headlamp on. I have a whole toolkit. No gloves. She went in and extracted the ingrown hair in my vagine and was excited <laughs> and enthusiastic <laughs> about the entire process, bizarrely excited you about know it. i read about that on the daily mail it, it's a whole are there are pictures <laughs> yeah no that is friendship that yes. is friendship that, it so, never even occurred to me not to go in but you know you know the the phenomenon where it's it's not as easy to change other people's babies diapers That's right, right. I'm, I'm not sure i could pop Another teenager's pimples. Yeah, no. I want to watch the the globe. <laughs> we'll watch it all pimples, but I don't want to do it. Roman, so. my youngest son, had tubes put in his ears, mm-hmm. and my sister was married to an ear, nose, and throat doctor at the time. It's her ex husband now, but she was like, "Hey, Craig, will you please, when everything you pull out of Roman's ears, will you please preserve it and send yes. it home with Roman?" So Roman is two. We come home from the hospital. Pumps is waiting on my front porch. This is back when we smoked cigarettes. She's smoking. She goes, do you have it? Uh, do you have the stuff? I, like I a junkie. It. Yes, she no. opens up the container. No glove. Bare backs her hand in, grabs the ball of earwax, goes completely through all the texture of it. She's like, oh, oh that was bad. fantastic. And then yeah. she goes and scrubs her hands. And, it, and it, I mean... It sounds so crazy, and it is, but if you know pumps, it's just like, I know that if I have a major zit or an ingrown hair, I have to preserve that for yeah, her to be to able to it. extract yeah. it. No, yeah. it's bad. Yeah. It's bad. AKA crackheads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Re, let's segue over to marriage and how people online identify and talk about their marriage and talk about their husband. You know, I like to... Before I'm snarky, I like to shine the spotlight on myself a little bit. And <laughs> I, I, you know, I actually I've been blogging for years. I I started blogging in 2006, and I always did have a very uh, positive way of talking about Lad. But it was more like I was I was kind of 
posting pictures of his butt wearing right. ra- not naked wearing <laughs> wranglers he, he's a cowboy you know chaps right. and wranglers yeah and I, yeah <clears throat> take pictures and post them and uh, so I I've always kind of spoken glowingly about that I just I just never got into the habit of kind of um, busting his chops but um lately and and it part of this is just being old and bitter and <laughs> you know I the I'm in the twilight of my life and so but this the phrase that gets me and I love every one of you who have ever used this phrase but I tell my daughters you are not to use this phrase about your husband <laughs> 10 years ago I married my best friend <laughs> Or 25 years ago, I married my best friend with a wedding photo. Right. And I've just never understood the concept of – and I'm – I lads, lads, my guy. I, right. I You know, we we hang. We we do things together. But it, considering him my best friend is tricky. Yeah. No. Who are you going to talk to him about? I mean, girls is where you, like, get all your venting out and stuff. Like, he would listen. Especially right. if it's I about can't him. Talk, yeah, if I want to talk about my husband. Like, Lad really <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, do you say, let, do you talk about him in the third person or, <laughs> or do you say you? Lad was a real dick today, didn't you think so, <laughs> Lad? <laughs> <laughs> Which I love the name Lad. I do too. It's a great, it's it's a a great, great cowboy name. name. But also, I have two daughters that are Gen Z and they're, you know, 25 and 23. And I'm on to them. And I, you know, I will not allow them to have gender reveal parties. Thank when, you. When they, I, like, I no. will not allow their children to have graduation parties. And here, but here's the thing I was, I was thinking is about graduation parties for kindergartners and first graders. The generation now that is having children is not aware that that was not happening. Right. That it, when we were Right. They don't, up. they think it's normal. They, they absolutely think it's normal. Yeah. The over celebrating. I just think if you celebrate everything, that something really big happens, right. do you feel it? Yeah. Are we breathing sociopathy? <laughs> I mean, if everything is a huge event and that's your normal is cupcakes, rainbows, being air pumped up your ass all the time, when something really good happens, do you feel it? Do you know? I just, I think there's just a lot of over celebrating going on, but I have to share something with the two of you. A very alarming discovery what? that I found on the internet. Oh, good. Y'all are both going to die. I'm ready. It is a video that I found, and it's a couple, and she's pregnant. She has her belly. They're like Gen Zers, and they have three balloons on each side of them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's our name reveal. Party. Shut up. Each balloon has a name, like uh-uh. Lily, Trixie, you know, Alt McKenzie. And they go through, and she's got this poor guy, this poor poor whipped white boy trying to dance and look cute it's awful awful. and then she's they start popping balloons and they're going and i'm just thinking i wonder how many takes she made this (laughs) in for do i wonder how much how browbeat he got and they finally land on the name and i'm like a name reveal party (laughs) right this is out of control who are these monsters these are the people that had preschool graduations Mm -hmm. right exactly they don't they don't know that there's another way we need to show them the other way right we need to my responsibility is to go through my daughters yes. to change the world you know yes. when, i agree when it comes one daughter at a time we'd, love, we'd time. love to be on that committee yes <laughs> I, I'll, I'll uh you can be aunt pumps and aunt yes Jane. yes or aunt jessica <laughs> <laughs> y'all i'll just never hear the end just of never that. gonna hear i'm the never end of gonna it. hear the end of that this show is sponsored by better help pumps you know with all of the trials and tribulations that we've gone through. I have found that the one constant that has really helped me when I felt so vulnerable that sometimes I didn't even want to share with you, right, is therapy. Absolutely. With as busy as we are with our careers and now with the podcast, I have found better help. It's amazing. All you have to do is go online and you take a short quiz and then they match you with a therapist and then it like is suited to your schedule so you can do it from home. Oh, that's flexible and convenient. It's incredible. Can you switch therapists if you don't like the one that you're paired with? Totally. Because sometimes you have to find a therapist that's compatible for you so you can switch therapists with no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash it today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash it. 
Let me ask you this. So I'm an interior designer and it's funny because people will be like, oh my God, you have such a cool job. I think that would be so fun. And at some point, I've been doing this for like 26, 27 years. At some point, everything becomes a job, even something you're passionate about at the beginning. So I'll have clients that are indecisive. And I know when I've given somebody 17 different fabric choices, I know that they're the problem at that point. Because most people, (laughs) two to three samples work. And sometimes I just want to be like, I don't care. Paint your walls, fuchsia. (laughs) Cover your sofa in denim. Swing for the fences. And sometimes I feel like I've had it. Do you ever feel like that with cooking and with recipes? Even though you are the pioneer woman, have you sometimes just had it with that stuff? Oh, yes. But but ultimately, I've had it. I've just had it with myself. You know, I've had, I've had it with delicious. I've had it with nice and golden brown. And yeah, and, and honestly, yes, it's a job. Are, Filming. You, are you tired of doing life with the pioneer woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of doing life with doing anything. I, I'm just, I, I love, I am a homebody and I, I filming, I I love the show. I'm grateful for the show. I, I especially loved it when the kids were growing up because right. it was sort of this scrapbook for, for many years. And yes. that is nice. Yeah. And it's, I, I enjoy it. But like, like I said, I, I try to, I try to get through it because it's over. And I think I must have a little bit of camera built, you know, just um, leftover camera anxiety being on camera. Because yeah. I'm just like, put it in here, start, cook it. It's good. It's scrunch- <laughs> nice and golden brown. It's it's nice and golden brown. It's delicious. delicious. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Get out of my house. But I, lo- I love writing cookbooks. I love things where I am the keeper of my own schedule. I think it's, I think it's when I have to report somewhere at a certain time. Right. Deadlines. And other people are there for me. Right. I, I feel a lot of <laughs> everybody's like, waiting I feel like for I, you. I have to show up, I guess. Re, now we're going to play our game, had it or hit it. <sighs> Let me roll up my sleeves. Yeah. Okay. So you okay. tell us if you've had it with this or if you would hit it if you like it. Okay. okay. Oh my God. Welcome to had it or hit it. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Had it or hit it. Boxed craft macaroni and cheese. Hit it. Totally. Tomorrow. Love it. Like tonight, I'm going to stop and get some. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's one of the only things I can make. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I do, I, I leave a little of the macaroni out so the cheese is it's more extra intense cheese and concentrated. Good, you should consider a career in cooking. cooking. That's you a great should. Idea. That's a great idea. What if I pitch that to the Food Network as <laughs> a theme? We're going to make <laughs> some craft macaroni and cheese. You know what? This is the this is the pioneer woman shotgun method right here. Remember how Josh <laughs> likes to shotgun yes. stuff? Shotgunning with the pioneer woman. Okay. Mm. Had it or hit it? Recipes. I've had it with recipes because I just, I don't want to reach up and get a cookbook off the shelf and, you know, th- I, I can't see, I have to find my reading glasses. Yep. So I've had it with recipes, but I'm happy to take what I'm cooking and make a recipe out of it for others. I like it. So you can just eyeball stuff. At this point, yeah. That's pretty yeah. impressive. She's a not, not She's baking. A pro. Baking, no. I'm a ter- I'm actually a terrible baker. Really? Yeah. I'm just, I don't have the patience. I, it's very precise. It's scientific. Right. The you measurements. Can, you can oh. have a really bad outcome if you wing it on certain That's things. That's what happens to me most of the time in the kitchen <laughs> is a bad outcome all around. Okay. Next, had it or hit it, tattoos. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of in the middle. I, I have no tattoos, but that's because I'm a fair skinned redhead <laughs> and a middle <laughs> and child. A middle child. <laughs> also, by the time I sort of thought I, I might like a tattoo, I, I, you know, my body was shifting and changing and right. I, I figured I, I would probably get a phrase or a word and it would turn into like, <laughs> that's what I worry about too. And so, but I, I, I admire ink, really good ink. Josh has about 30 tattoos or something. <gasps> that Josh, come show us yes. your tattoos. And <laughs> don't ask him. One of the kids out. the other night said, Dad, what do all your tattoos mean? He goes, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> it's like Chinese characters, right. all sorts of like Fancy. Sanskrit, all this oh. shit that sounded good. And here's what's interesting about Josh. He got all of these tattoos over the age of 30. Okay, had it or hit it. And you're going to have to explain to our listeners what these are after I say it. Okay. Lamb fries. Had it with fries. I know it, they're balls, right? Right. right. So, they're, listener, this is an Oklahoma 
treat and they're are they cow balls or lamb balls we call them calf fries uh, calf, oh if it's or, cow balls if it's yeah or rocky mountain oysters right rocky that, Ma- yeah okay which That's is the biggest balls. euphemism of all time, all time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> terrible there but i do not like them i, I love them do you they're... with cocktail sauce oh, yeah, yeah. pump likes like, balls a lot do you like that <laughs> <laughs> Thinly sliced. I saw that on Daily Mail too. <laughs> yeah, um, but so you like them little thin. That's, thin. that's the secret. Is more breading. Yeah, know. lots of breading. They're fried yeah. cocktail sauce. Yeah, I do like a lamb fry, a cow ball. Had it. I've, I've had, had it. it. I've had it too. I'm with you. Fried on that. testicles. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our last one: vow renewal ceremony. Oh, had it. Yeah. But that's because I am a connoisseur of reality TV, and every single couple that has renewed their vows on reality TV is now divorced. divorced. It's the same in real life. I mean, it's like five years away from your recommitment ceremony, you're done. Well, and there it takes all kinds, but you were talking earlier about um, the, the name reveal popping balloon yes. and the husband that was sitting there. You know, it helps to be married to a man, a manly man who has a tractor and <laughs> right. like, never could get him to sit for if even if I wanted to. The idea that Lad Drummond would agree <laughs> to a vow renewal in any form, it, that the, it, he just would not understand the practical. We'd be like, we're, the, we're married. Yeah, what right. would be the purpose? We have four kids. It's just so practical. It, it wouldn't even, he wouldn't do Love it. Love that he's super I think practical. It's, I think it's red flagish. I, I think, think somebody's always fucked around. Somebody's fucked around and somebody found out. Right, and that's why we're renewing our vows. I must always. I have this theory of yours, and there's probably something to that, but also... I I do believe that. See, I don't. Do you like having parties? I do think sometimes it's an excuse for a party, not so no, much. No, I don't like to. Have I used so, to like them. I used to. As I've gotten older, I, I don't. Throwing parties. It might be that they want to throw a party too. Where they're I, in the middle of it. Giving, like, uh, I think they're, if you want to throw a party, you can throw a party. I think this is a grab to mask something. Yeah, I think to so mask too. because this is a very dramatic thing to do because you've already been married. You know, and then you're going to get remarried, but you never divorced. Do you and your husband sit on the same side of the booth at a restaurant? Oh gosh, no. no. Thank no. God. No, but he did have a girlfriend in high school who sat in the middle seat of his pickup next oh. to him. He had, he did confess this to me That's one day. That's a great Oklahoma shit. That is but, but right. So, it's it so is Oklahoma. so, yeah. But I will say, so if we were in a band, I have mm-hmm. a name. Okay, oh, what is it? it? The Bitter Hags. Because that's it. what we are. I love we're bitter, it. High five. We're hags. We, everything bugs us and we don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> <Right>. The bitter, <laughs> just want to stay at home. The Bitter, bitter Hags. hags. <laughs> totally. Totally. I love it. Well, Re, this has been a so super fun. duper treat. I mean, I feel an instant connection. Yes. I love how you've had it with everything, even <laughs> recipes. I mean, that is so good. Pumps, what do you have to say? Such this a is gr- your show. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Such a treat. I'm so glad you came. I mean, it was like, we were really excited. Of course, Josh was out here dying. He was so starstruck. It was ridiculous. So thanks Aww. for taking the time. Thank you, girls. As I said, I don't like to go anywhere, but I was so excited to come here. I've well, we'll have to go to Pawhuska next, next time. Yes, we do Ooh. need to go to Pawhuska. Yes. I, I wouldn't mind eating at that restaurant. Well, I'll make you craft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special recipe for That's it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Excellent. Well, listener, please go give us a review. Subscribe. Do all the shit you're supposed to do and we will see you next Tuesday or Thursday. Thank you. I'll tell you what I've had it with.